They want to know about the twins. You never do that in teaching. They're all distracted. I'll never get them back again. Uh, I, too, am, um, was so honored to be invited and so happy to be here. I always tell my husband I feel like I'm at my best in Jerusalem. Um, I'm sure so many of us feel that way. Uh, also honored about the uh, complexion of this panel in particular, and I just have to share some personal nachas of seeing Justin. Uh, Justin, I knew you when you were this high. And uh, really, really wonderful. Um, you know. Okay, Montreal, let's settle down. Settle down. Yeah, we're all very local here. Uh, one of the challenges that we have as panelists and that we discussed in our conference call beforehand is, you know, everyone wants to be the provocative panel that everyone leaves talking about. And, and our, our struggle was we, we're pretty much going to be on the same page. Uh, there, I think, you know, I haven't heard the rabbi yet, but. This is actually very good news. Uh, no, not that I haven't heard the rabbi yet, but it, it's good news that there's tremendous consensus that there's something really wonderful and unique and extraordinary, what I would give to be 25 in the Jewish world today. This is not the Jewish world in which I grew up, um, and there's probably no more interesting segment of the Jewish world that is more interesting uh, and breaking molds and doing the unimaginable than this demographic of young Jews and young leaders. Um, I've been teaching and observing this cohort since about the age of 19. I'm now 54. You can do the math. Not my strong suit. I'm a Jewish educator, a medieval philosopher, so we never had to add. Um, and actually, I've always taught either college age or adults. And uh, one of my favorite teaching moments at the University of Cincinnati, I was sharing with my students that I, at one point I had to teach for about three months preschoolers, and I was terrible at it, terrible. I used to watch the clock, so did they. They couldn't even tell time. And I, I was sharing with my students how bad I was at it, and one of my students said, perhaps Professor Fisher, it's because preschoolers, preschoolers don't take well to sarcasm. I'm like, maybe that was it. So. <laughs> My remarks are going to be uh, anecdotal and through, through observation. Um, first, let me answer the questions. Recruitment from the outside, is it good? Yes, of course it's good. Outside, anything outside is good, right? Ivory, Judaism, Abraham, all of the great leaders of our biblical narratives were all in one respect or another outsiders. All of the interesting moments in Jewish history happen in some respect, either philosophically or somehow physically, from the outside. Outside is always good. As Jews, we want outside. That's what keeps us honest. That keeps us interesting. The prophets were the ultimate outsiders. No one wanted to hear what they had to say. Actually, when I, when I landed here, I went through passport control. I haven't had a chance to, have, this is my biggest audience so far, I haven't had a chance to tell anyone this yet. I went through passport control, and the officer looks up. I don't know how he figured this out, but without asking me a single question, he said, are you coming to the conference? I said, yes, actually, I am. Are you seeing a lot of people coming? He said, yeah, I don't understand. So many people ganging up on one man? And he said, you mean the president? He said, yeah. I said, no, we're, we're not ganging up. And I tried to explain it. And he said, does he get to respond? <laughs> so I tried to explain, no, no, it's an honor for us to be here. And so one guy in the country, no one's mad at him. He just said, next. But anyway. <laughs> so in the answer to recruitment, yes, outside is good. Uh, who is the success, what's the successful profile of a young Jewish leader? Well, I, I can tell you what, what isn't the successful profile and something that we've sort of been relying on, particularly in the organized federation community, which is if you're 45 and you have a heartbeat and you walk into an organized Jewish uh, institution, you're a leader. Um, <laughs> and, and yes, it's funny, but I, I mean that quite honestly. You know. As much as you're going to hear a lot of grassroots talk in terms of what makes something interesting and real, I'm just going to you know, throw a dose of cold water and also remind us that we've sort of um, cheapened, in some respects, the notion of leadership and what it really means. And so really all I'm interested in terms of the successful profile is someone who has talent and talent that can be nurtured and has the inclination and predilection to involve oneself in the Jewish community. And so those are the answers to the questions, but let me just share with you again through my anecdotal experience as a longtime Jewish teacher, um, the two things that I want us to think about. The first I would just describe as, let them be. 
which is really sort of the philosophical underpinning of what you just heard Justin describe. What Justin just described, and Carolyn and Johanna in many respects, is sort of the outcome, the practicality of what it means to let a generation be. I'm going to uh, anger a few Montrealers, I think, or disappoint them when I share the following. Um, we did a tremendous thing in Montreal uh, a number of years ago when we were worried about who was leaving and we created this tremendous initiative uh, called Pro Montreal, and, and it was successful. And a piece of it was developing what we called Student Federation. One of the success stories is sitting right here. But let me share with you my observations. For some, we brought in perfectly interesting, not that well-dressed, mostly McGill students, and we made them, our expression was, we, they became federated. And it was almost like invasion of the body snatchers, where these really interesting, cool students who were upset with the Federation for a whole bunch of reasons now became one of us. And I'm not going to say that they started walking around with Chanel bags, <laughs> which would be Mark by Mark Jacobs would be the closest thing. But there was this kind of intoxication with being involved at a power structure that was not only inappropriate to them, but took away the best piece of them, which was that outsiderness. And so sometimes in our desperation to get young people involved, particularly in our mainstream institutions, we get them involved in such a way that takes away the best thing about them or doesn't allow them to express it in their fullest. In another kind of way, I want to make an observation about birthright. And this all goes back to the notion of genuineness. Because I think everyone in the panel would agree with me that what students have and what young leaders have that some of us lose through time and disappointment and experience is a genuineness and a sense of authenticity. And I always feel that, ironically, birthright is at its best when as much as follow-up is critical. And as much as follow-up is part of the equation, I always want the young people who we take to know that that's not why we bring you to Israel. We bring you to Israel because we love Israel. We bring you to Israel because we want you to love Israel. And it's not always the so that. So that when you come back, you will marry a Jew. So that when you come back, you'll get involved with your hello. So that when you come back, you'll give staka. We bring you here because it's right. And part of that genuineness, the capacity to be honest, uh, will allow us to be successful in these unbelievably uh, wonderful and original initiatives. And so what we're seeing now is a new world, uh, Justin mentioned some of them, of social entrepreneurship, present tense, reboot, slingshot, jumpstart, uh, the whole Jewish funders network, uh, all as a response to what can we do differently and how can we shake it up. Um, so let them be as they are. And our job is to let us be who we are. And what I mean by that is, Sort of the opposite of, um, you know, there's the Saturday Night Live old skit of, of the stewardess who goes up, the flight attendant, and says, sir, I'm just going to have to ask you to calm down. So the good news that you're hearing here is us saying to the Jewish community, calm down. It's going to be okay. And not only is it going to be okay because these interesting things are happening, because we're letting students and young leaders be themselves but it's gonna be okay because we need to have an existential confidence in what it is that we are. And what it is that we are are a terribly interesting people. A people, as you've heard, with this rich system of values that becomes even more interesting with time. And I will tell you, and I'm sure the rabbi will, I hope, back me up in one way or another, I have never seen text study fail. I have never seen an encounter with serious Jewish ideas fail. It's always better and more interesting because of it. President Perez spoke this morning about trust. And we need to trust the product that we have. And we need to mine it. And we need to exploit it. And we need to believe it as a Jewish community. If we do what we do best, if we are in our best possible sense of ourselves, which is Jews with this miraculous, complicated, wrestling tradition, Allow it to be exposed. Trust that that's what we have to offer. Trust that young Jewish leaders want to be, you know, messed up a little bit. They want to feel challenged. They want to feel that what we have to offer is complicated. Otherwise, it's not interesting. And I would say lastly, if there is one trait that I hope that we are both producing and um, exposing and seeing in young, young Jewish leaders is this notion of 
combination of being interesting and being vulnerable. That I think the reason young leadership is so interesting is because it brings to us is vulnerability. And my disappointment in brings, bringing student leaders into this very kind of artificial or contrived or predictable adult structure is that we remove that idea of the vulnerability, of the hunger and the interest. And as Woody Allen says about love, unless it keeps on moving forward, it sinks. I would say about Jewish leadership, it needs to keep on moving forward. It needs to stay interesting. It needs to stay authentic. And therefore, it will explode. Thank you.